It's very interesting this week and I was reading this portion of the scripture and I'm reading a Bible reading plan which gives me Old Testament and New Testament combined and it was so interesting that as I was reading in Exodus chapter 12 about the lamb who was to be slain for the redemption it somehow happened that I came across in my Bible reading plan at the same time reading in Matthew chapter 26 where Jesus was being led to the cross. It just literally, I had, I had goosebumps when I was reading the Bible because the resemblance was so unique. How the lamb here had to be a male. And how I read Jesus, you know, he was also the male. How I read the lamb here, he had to be, you know, one years old. He couldn't be a baby lamb. He had to be already somewhat grown. And I go and I see Jesus who dies not at age of 80, at the age of 60, but at the prime of his age. I read how the lamb had to be spotless and without wrinkles. Means he couldn't have a broken rib, he couldn't have a broken leg, and he couldn't be colorblind. He couldn't be any defect. There could be no defect in him. He had to be completely the best. And I read about Jesus, how he was spotless. How I know he was spotless? The very pilot, a Roman man, said to the Pharisees, I find no fault in him. The very man who betrayed Jesus, Judas, brought 30 shackles and threw them on the ground and said, I've betrayed innocent blood. Jesus' innocence was not only testified by the Father, it was testified by his most cruel betrayers. A spotless lamb. No wonder John the Baptist called Jesus, this is the lamb of God that's coming. I read in Exodus where the lamb had to be slain and roast it in fire and then we go into Matthew and we see Jesus he had to be killed because the wrath the fire of the wrath of God has to roast him and literally burn him and kill him I read that in here the bones of the lamb were not allowed to be broken and then we read about Jesus how his bones had to be left unbroken how they broke the bones of other criminals but they left his bones unbroken I continue to read and I see that in here that the flesh had to be eaten of the lamb and we see that Jesus says eat my flesh and drink my blood that Jesus doesn't want us to only look at him he wants us to feed of him feast of him and to live of him I read in Exodus chapter 12 that the blood of the lamb had to be drained in the basin and you had to take these herbs hyssop a special plant that grows there in Egypt and you had to take the hyssop and dip the blood of the lamb and not just put somewhere on the floor but you had to go put on a high place called a doorpost and also a place that's visible to everybody I read in the New Testament how the blood of Jesus I take my hyssop called my faith and I dip the blood from 2,000 years ago and I am not gonna Bible says not to trample on the blood of Jesus Christ but we put it over the doorposts of our hearts means we make public confession of our inner faith our faith is not private our faith also goes public when we trust in Jesus Christ I go on and I see the fact that the firstborn who were spared on that crazy night were the firstborn that God required the next day and said the firstborn who were spared I want them now to belong to me I want them to be consecrated to me it's as though you didn't die in Egypt but you're not gonna ever live to yourself no more. Deliverance and freedom is when God replaces the devil by being the supreme in your life, not just kicking the devil out so you can do whatever you want, kicking the devil out so you can do what God wants. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. It's interesting, it doesn't say where the demon is gone, there is freedom most of us define freedom by the absence of the devil God defines freedom by his presence in your life that means you can have a demon out of your life and still not be free real freedom is not when you're spared for them from the plague real freedom is when your life is consecrated to God and you said the plague missed me so that I can fully and completely utterly belong to Jesus Christ